Welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and today, very excited to be going through a Kickstarter preview series for Deceased from Come On Games, currently on crowdfunding in its final hours. So definitely check out the pinned comment and video description for the link if you're interested in this one, and stay tuned to the channel as more videos come out around gameplay. This video is going to focus on the how to set up, showing you exactly how to get this Zombicide iteration to the table. If you're not part of the Facebook group or the Discord server, we'd love to have you in both spots. We're talking about crowdfunding games, retail release games, and all solo games, and everything in between in those locations. We'd love to have you. Without further ado, let's dive through setup. The first step of setup is to select your mission. You'll have the core box worth of missions as well as expansion missions to choose from in the final iteration of the Kickstarter campaign. In this prototype, as I mentioned, there's three and we're going for the middle one of the road. There is normal difficulty, hard difficulty, and nightmare. Now, you can also make a hard difficulty scenario like Metropolis Under Siege even more difficult by playing or controlling solo less than four characters. Every time you remove a character out of the equation, you're making the game inherently a little more difficult. We'll talk more about characters later on, but for now we're going to begin to set up the tiles of the environment itself. We've completed the second step, which is to place all the tiles on the game table based on the mission and in the right orientation. Step number three is all about placing tokens in the appropriate spots based on the mission setup. It's worth mentioning for my copy, my prototype copy, I'm going ahead and marking two of the backs of the objectives. These are going to represent the green side. In the final version, you're going to have some tokens which have a red side and opposite side will have a different color. In this one, I don't have those. They're all solid colors for each of them. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark these two up. These will be my green objectives. So when everything is flipped over, we're going to go ahead and mix everything around. Of course, these don't really matter and we're going to place them randomly throughout the mission two of them will be green four of them will be red at this point i've got the spawn points in play we have three of the ones with the exclamation mark in the middle one two and one way over there on the far right beside that one as well is another spawn point with a one inside we'll talk about all these during gameplay next up we have some light posts two of them in the middle of the street one there and one up north and now we're going to place all six of the objectives and again i've done this randomly i have no idea which two are green and which four are red they'll be placed in the four spots depicted by the mission setup the six objectives are in place, and it's worth mentioning in the final version, there will be a superhero starting zone token, which will be placed where the heroes enter the mission. In this case, it's dead center. There are two parts to step number four. The first is to ensure that you've taken out the secret mission cards from the bystanders deck if the mission doesn't call for them to be used. So unless otherwise stated by the mission, you're going to remove these two secret mission cards from the deck. Then you're going to shuffle up this bystander deck and you're going to place one face down next to every icon that has this symbol right here. There's one to the south, one in the bottom right, and one way up in the top right. Step number five is the exact same procedure, except this time with the equipment deck. You'll take the deck, you'll find the two secret mission cards and always remove them unless the mission specifies otherwise. Then you'll go ahead, shuffle up the deck, and this time we're looking for this chest icon of which there are four. We'll place four face down cards randomly right in those spaces. The four equipment cards have been placed here, here, one in the center at the very top, and one to the very top right. Step number six is very easy. Find the card backs on the left to make the spawn deck, and on the right for the zombie hero deck. You're going to shuffle these independently and place them near the game board within easy reach. The spawn deck is all about the hordes, which will be coming after the players during the game, and then the other deck, the zombie hero deck, is going to present unique challenges per each zombie hero which is present in the game. I've placed a heroic trait deck on the side of the game board as well, including three reference cards that came in the prototype. There'll likely be many more than these for the interactive objects within the missions. This mission currently has light posts, so we'll be using this one. We now move on to character selection, and as you can always do with Zombicide, you can select the characters which are your favorites in order to build out your hero squad, or you can go ahead and just randomly let the die decide and fate choose who's going to join you. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll a die here. We're going to assign numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And again, these are only the prototype characters involved. The final version will have many more beyond this, including all the expansions and extra stretch goals that have bolstered this lineup of heroes to choose from. And so we're going to roll the die right now for four characters. Characters. So four is the minimum to go on this mission when playing solo or with multiple people. You can increase it to five or six characters being controlled, but there are special rules in each mission that might boost things up or require you to do different things during setup. So be aware of that. Of course, that's a balancing thing. So we're going to go ahead right now and roll the die. Let's see who our first character is going to be of the party. Again, nines and tens are not going to matter. So seven is going to have green canary coming in. The next roll is going to be for... 
a nine, and we currently do not have anyone in slot nine, so we're gonna re-roll this and see what happens. Again, I'm not taking anybody unless it lands exactly. We got another seven, so that is nothing. We'll continue to roll. We got ourselves a six, that's gonna be Green Arrow. Green Canary and Green Arrow are part of the Hero Squad so far. Let's go ahead and roll to see who is next. It is going to be Wonder Woman. And for the final addition to the squad, it is going to be Batman. The final squad is represented by Green Canary, Green Arrow, Wonder Woman, and finally Batman. Quite happy I landed that Batman role because he is my favorite DC character, hands down. That completes step number seven and eight as all the superhero ID cards are in the dashboards and also making sure the danger bar across the bottom is set to zero for all of them. Step number nine is all about associating a color with each of the characters in your squad. So I've chosen to use this off light purple color for Batman. I'll select the other colors for the other heroes in a moment. You're gonna have two tracker cubes for each of the heroes. One will go in the health bar across the top in the third position on the far right. And then you'll see the vertical power track. It's gonna also start in the zero position there. That's the same across all of the heroes that I have here. Each one of them will get one of these bases to put on their miniature as well. It's worth mentioning that for the prototype, the bases do not slip on the miniatures very well at all, but in the final version, I'm not concerned in the least that there will be any problems with the bases connecting to the miniatures, as every previous project from Come On in terms of having colored bases have always fit no problem. Here in the prototype, they just fit way too snug. So what I've done, I'm gonna basically just flip it face down and then just place the miniature on top so you guys can still visually see which characters which from a distance. Now we'll take a look at the other three characters so you can see which colors I've selected for each of them. I've also placed an activation token in the top left of every single hero dashboard. This is gonna help you to see visually, as well as when you're playing the game yourself, when it comes in the mail in the future, as to which characters have already activated at a glance, which is quite nice. Also worth mentioning, this tape will not be in the final version, of course. Also keep your dice within easy reach and place all four of your heroes in the starting position based on the mission, which in this case is right here. And our heroes have arrived on scene. A couple final things to wrap up the video. First off, there are six dice for the prototype and also six dice in the core game when it lands in the future. Just wanted to show you that in the prior shots, I had five dice. There was one off screen, so just clarifying that. And then over here, we have some door tokens. There might be additional tokens either in the final version or even in this prototype per mission that you might wanna have close by. For me, the door token's really big because of course you're gonna be cracking through buildings and exploring on your way to trying to find the objectives here in this case. So we're gonna need door tokens. And in the next video, Video. If you're not subscribed, do so. We're going to dive into that playthrough to show you exactly how this thing flows and operates. I'll go over all the objectives and all the special rules at that point. We'll also take an up close look at each one of these heroes and what they bring to the table. Thanks so much for watching, and also be sure to let us know in the comments down below what you think of Deceased to this point. Are you for it, against it, somewhere in between, still deciding? Let me know in the comments, and if you are trying to decide on it, you can always join the Discord or the Facebook group where we're having conversations about these crowdfunding projects, retail releases, and a number of other solo games out in the wild already at all times. We'd love to have you in either spot or both. Thank you again for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo. Oops.